Betty, it's been so, so long, hasn't it? I have some huge news to share with you, but is now a good time to talk? No, it is never a good time to talk with you, Angela. You know, I still get angry even just having to be reminded that you exist, so if you don't mind, I'd really rather not have this conversation at all. Wait, what? Now hold on for just one second there. I mean, you haven't heard from me in years, and this is the way that you choose to greet me? Don't you think you're being just a little mean? Are you telling me that you've already forgotten what you did to me? I thought we were friends, or at least friendly, and you stabbed me in the back. You have really got some nerve coming to me asking if I want to catch up about your life. Oh, but that was already two years ago. You really have got to get over these things, Betty. I mean, what is there even left to be mad about? It all happened so long ago. Well, I don't care how long ago it happened. I am never, ever going to forgive you for what you did to me. I mean, our daughters used to be friends at preschool. I thought that we got along too. You were always someone I felt like I could trust. But then you had to go and steal my husband away from me. Surely you can't still be hung up over all that, right? I mean, I know I probably shouldn't have done what I did, but it's not like you can really blame me for going after something that I wanted, right? That isn't true, though. You were always trying to go after my husband, and you know it. You were probably just pretending to be friends with me, too. Also, you could get to Dave. In fact, you even said as much to me before, don't you remember? Right, but what I'm saying is that Dave was a serious catch. If you don't think there were going to be women out there interested in making him theirs, then that's on you. Besides, I was a single mother. You have no idea just how tough I had it. And then when I met Dave and found out this handsome man also had a good paying job, well, what was a woman to do? So yeah, I was trying to steal him away from you for a while, but it worked, didn't it? <laughs> I knew talking to you like this was a bad idea. Just reading these messages is already making my blood boil. But anyways, Dave is your husband now, and I don't see why I should have to know anything about your lives. So if you'll excuse me, I really must be going now. But wait, you can't leave yet. I haven't even gotten to talk to you about my big news. You see, the thing is that yesterday, Dave passed away. So, anyways, I just wanted to let you know that I'm a single mother once again. W wait are you serious? Dave is dead? Yeah, he had been complaining about some kind of chest pains for a while, but then he was also complaining about always being too busy with work to go and see a doctor. And then yesterday he just collapsed at work and never got up. It sounds to me like he had a stroke. I see. Well... Thank you for sharing that information with me. I really had no idea that Dave was gone. Oh, I guess this means that I'll have to break the news to little Julia then. Uh, he really was taken from this world too soon. Like, couldn't he have waited just a little longer? Can you believe that we were only married two years before he kicked the bucket? You know, I have a lot of things I want to say to you, but for now... Just know that I really am sorry for your loss. I hope that wherever he is, Dave is in a better place now. Thank you for those kind words, Betty. But you really don't need to waste any time worrying about me, you know. I may be single again, but I'm not going to let that get me down. I'm going to move on with my life. And it also helps that I get everything in Dave's will, too. I'm sure that all that money will help me in recovering from my tragic loss. Wait, what do you mean? Dave left you money in his will? That's right. I really just can't believe he's gone. I mean, I was just starting to really enjoy the life of being a wife of a CEO. But now that he's gone, I guess that just means that I'll have to have enough fun for the both of us. Well, I'll try and avoid speaking ill of the dead. But if you have to give him credit for anything, Dave knew how to run a business. Not only that, but he was never once late with a child support payment, but I guess he must have also set something aside for you as well. Oh yes, he did. And I was going to take that money, go to South Korea, and get plastic surgery. Then I'm going to be the hottest widow on the market, and it is going to make finding a new man to sweep me off my feet that much easier. 
Oh man, maybe things will finally go well for me. Wait a second, Angela. Don't you think that you're being just a little disrespectful right now? What are you talking about? In what way am I being disrespectful? Well, I mean that you're bragging about the money you're going to inherit from Dave, and not only that, but you said you were going to use it to find a new husband. Don't you think there should be a longer mourning period or something for him? I don't really see how the amount of time I spent mourning is going to make any other man want me more. If anything, it'll just make me look like some depressed widow who is too sad to remarry. And I really don't think that's what Dave would have wanted for me. I'm not saying that you don't deserve to be happy in your life, but the funeral hasn't even happened yet, right? Should you really even be thinking about the inheritance this early after he's gone? I knew it! I knew that you were just jealous of how much money I was going to be getting, but anyways, now you know what's happening. Hello, is this Betty? We met once before, but I'm not sure if you remember me. I'm Thomas, Angela's son. Oh, Thomas, of course I remember you. You were just a bit older than Julia in elementary school, weren't you? I just wanted to say that I'm very, very sorry for your loss. I'm not sure how close you and Dave managed to get before he passed, but I'm sure this is hitting you quite hard. I didn't think of Dave as my dad at all. In fact, to me, he was always just Julia's dad that my mom managed to steal from your family. But I could never live with the feeling of stealing Julia's dad. Thomas, I had no idea that you felt this way about the whole situation. Well, I actually am messaging you today because I have a few things that I want to talk to you about. For example, do you know how to have a funeral? I've tried looking up things online, but I feel like it just made me more confused than anything else. Wait, what? Why on earth are you looking up something like that? Well, my mom said that she didn't have time to deal with Dave's funeral, so she told me to handle it all. So I guess that means that I'm in charge of organizing it and stuff. You have got to be kidding me. Did your mom really say that? Yeah, I mean, my mom is back to being a single mother. We don't really talk to any of our relatives. Especially not after she had her affair with Dave. That was the last straw for a lot of people. But anyways, that's bad for me because it means that I don't have anyone to ask. But I just... Wait a minute. Where is your mom right now, Thomas? I mean, why in the world would she leave arranging the entire funeral up to you? Well, my mom is actually out of the country on vacation right now. She told me that she just found out that the check for Dave's money just cleared and that she was off to spend it. She's away on a vacation right now? So not only is she not going to be at Dave's funeral, but the reason she won't is because she's traveling? Betty, I just want you to know how sorry I am that you've had to deal with my mom's antics. I really am always trying to stop her from acting this way, but anytime I say anything to her, it's like talking to a brick wall. She doesn't listen to anything I have to say. And this morning when I woke up, she was gone. Thomas, please, you do not have to apologize to me for what your mom does. In fact, I'm glad that you reached out to talk to me about all of this. I'm very proud of how maturely you've been acting about all this. As for the funeral, that isn't something a child should have to plan. You can leave it all to me. You mean it? You really want to help plan your ex-husband's funeral? Even after he left you and Julia for my mom? I don't know what to say. All this time I thought that I should have had to plan the funeral as a kind of punishment. You don't deserve to be punished for anything, Thomas. You haven't done anything wrong. You're a very sweet and kind boy, but this is something the grown-ups should have to deal with. But what I want to know is, if your mom is away on her trip, are you okay? Do you have enough food in the house for yourself? Kind of. I've been eating a lot of frozen meals that I'm getting from the store, but I'm pretty used to it after all this time. All this time? What do you mean by that, Thomas? Well, I just mean that my mom never cooks for me to begin with, so ever since I was little, I've always been eating prepared stuff from the store. But when my mom married Dave, she told him to give me more money to buy food, so I was actually given a budget of about $20 a meal. And Dave really had no problem with you never eating a home-cooked meal at all? I don't know whether or not he minded, but he was always too busy with work to do anything. I mean, we would eat out together at restaurants from time to time, but that was it, really. 
So neither Dave nor your mom ever cooked a meal for you themselves? I don't get it. Don't they understand how important this time of your life is for growth? Thomas, I want you to come over to my house right away. You are welcome to stay here until all the funeral business is done with. Wait, what? You can't really be serious about that, right? Of course I'm serious. Besides, Julia is always talking about wanting to see you. She hasn't seen you since Angela and Dave got married and you transferred schools. I think it's been at least 10 years since you last saw each other. But there's no way that I could ever face your daughter in person. I mean, my mom was the person who stole her father away from her mother. I'm the son of the woman who completely ruined her family. But you didn't do anything, and you can't blame yourself for this. This is all on your mom, and you shouldn't feel any responsibility for it at all. Now please, come over here and enjoy some real food. Honestly, someone your age shouldn't be having to deal with all of this. It's just tragic. Betty, thank you so much. Of course, but I just wonder if you haven't already forgotten where I live. Anyways, I'll think of something special to cook for dinner tonight, so you hurry on over here. I heard that you stepped in for my son and ended up organizing the whole of Dave's funeral. Even to the end, I guess you never really were over him, were you? Why else would you step up and take over for Thomas like that? You have got some nerve asking me that. Why in the world was it up to your son to hold the funeral anyways? I mean, he is barely a teenager. There is no way he would have been able to do all that by himself. Honestly, what in the world is the matter with you? Didn't you feel a need to pay your respects to Dave at all? What more do I need to respect him for when I have all of his money? You really are a rather sentimental person, do you know that? And just what is that supposed to mean? I mean that you did all of this for Dave when you two aren't even married anymore. I certainly hope that you didn't hope to get anything from me by doing this. Because if you think that I'm going to share a penny of what Dave left me, then you are very, very wrong. Oh, please, do you really think that that's why I stepped in to help your son? I am really getting sick of all your wild delusions, Angela. Here I thought that you would have wanted to show some kind of emotion to Dave's memory, but instead I'm the one having to host the funeral all by myself. There you go, trying to guilt me into giving you something. I knew you would try this. But unfortunately for you, it isn't going to work. I've already told you that you aren't going to see a single penny. Dave's inheritance is all mine. So don't bother trying to kiss up to me. It won't work. You do know that Dave and I never actually got a divorce, right? And just what is that supposed to mean? I mean that had we actually been divorced, then you would have the rights to his will. But the fact is that Dave and I never finalized the divorce, so... We were just separated. But legally, we were still married. So basically, I have a much stronger claim to his estate than you do. What in the world are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Dave and I were married for two whole years before he died. That's the reason why I stole him from you. Besides, I know for a fact that we signed the wedding documents and everything. But did you actually see Dave ever take them to the courthouse for processing? Of course I didn't. Why would I both need to follow him all the way there? I signed the papers. That means we're married. It really is as simple as that. After we signed the documents, I left it all up to Dave to take care of. Well, then I think that Dave might have tricked you because you two were never married. You really have no idea what you're talking about. Do you know that? Oh, I'm afraid that I do, though. You see, I never forgave either of you for your affair. And one way that I got my revenge was by refusing to divorce Dave. It would have been so easy to just sign the papers and be done with it, but then I knew that that would make things even easier for him. I still carried around my grudge against you two, so I never ever signed any kind of divorce papers. You have got to be kidding me! I am not at all, and Dave knew he had no choice but to go along with it, since I could have taken away his visiting rights to see our daughter. I told him that if he and I get divorced, that he would never, ever see his daughter again. You did what? But this doesn't make any sense. This is the first I'm hearing of any of this. 
Well, now you know that for the past two years, your so-called marriage to Dave was all a lie. But surely the courts would have seen that we were together. I'm afraid that it's not a matter of that at all. Dave's will lays out quite explicitly that his wife is to get everything. And that would mean that it all goes to me. It doesn't really say that, does it? Surely there's got to be a mistake here. My name has to be on that somewhere. There has to be a version around here with my name on it. Well, you said he died suddenly from a stroke, right? So what makes you think he would have even made something like that? I found Dave's will, and just as I thought, I am going to get a huge amount of money. You mean you found a new version of the will? That's right. He said that even though we weren't married, he wanted to leave me everything as a way of apologizing for lying to me. I see. Well, if the document is really real, then you have to go and get it notarized. That way it can be used legally, otherwise it would just look like you were trying to pass off a fake document as the real one. And that is a very serious crime. Wait, hold on, is that really true? You mean I can't just show them this document that I found this morning? But then, you have to at least give me something. Ah, so you mean you did forge that document? Please, I have a child. I need Dave's money to take care of him. Oh, don't worry about me, Mom. Betty already said that she was going to pay for my college. I'm glad that you got back home from your trip there. Betty was so worried about me when she heard that you were gone. She took me in for a few days. Wait a second. Is this Thomas? What are you talking about? You're with Betty right now, and what do you mean she's going to pay for your schooling? I mean that she is going to be more of a mother to me than you ever were. She already has been in just a short time that I've been here. We've been talking, and she told me that if I managed to get into a college, that she would pay for all four years of my tuition. But that isn't fair. What do I get there? I don't care what you get, Mom. I was talking with Julia, and she was so excited that we're going to go to college together. Thomas, you can't trust someone like Betty. She's going to charge you interest. She's going to try and trap you with debt. No. She said she was going to do all this for free. Betty told me I won't owe her a penny, ever. And so, I really don't need or want you in my life anymore, Mom. I think I'm old enough to take care of myself. After all, I've been doing it already for years now. How dare you talk to your mother that way? What is the matter with you? Is that really the last thing you wanted to say to me as my mom? No, wait, don't go. I'm sorry. I just... Please, you have to talk to Betty and convince her to share some of that money with me. I need it. I see. Well, if that's all you need me for, I think I'm going to be going now. Have a nice life, Mom. Don't reach out to talk to me ever again. Wait, no, Thomas, come back! Please, you can't just leave me like this. I'm your mother. Can't you see that I really need help right now? Please, you have to come back. Thomas! After that, I talked with Thomas and agreed to let him live with Julia and I. He really is a brilliant kid, and he excelled in all of his classes. By the time he finished school, he was valedictorian and even gave a speech to all of his classmates. Julia and I support him through the college application process. By the time he heard back from all the schools he applied to, he had five different full-ride offers to choose from. I continued to get harassing messages from Angela begging for money. She even hired a lawyer and tried to sue me. But she quickly burned through what little money she had left doing that, and it got her nowhere. Now that Thomas is in school, he tells me that he swears to pay me back one day, and I tell him that he has nothing to worry about at all. Maria, it's been a while. Do you know who this is? How did you get my WhatsApp ID? What do you want? Don't be so mad. How have you been? I'm fine. So what do you want? I'm so happy you haven't changed, short-tempered Maria. <laughs> I wanted you to know that I'm getting married. Oh, congratulations. That's all. Rather a trite reply. I contacted you because I want you to come to my wedding. 
You're coming, right? Huh, you're inviting me? That's really in poor taste, don't you think? Really? After all, I met my fiancé because of you, Maria. So it's only natural that I want your blessing. Maybe it's just me, but I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. Really? Haven't you gotten over it already? It's been two years since Kent and you broke up. I am totally over it. It's a part of my past. A terrible, dark part of my past. Well, then that's fine. Can I ask you to make a toast? Is it really fun playing around with others' feelings? You know I'm not an appropriate guest for your wedding. Yes, it's totally fun. Psych! <laughs> I'm not that cruel. FYI, I'm not attending your wedding. So let it go, okay? Are you serious? Of course I am. Why? Oh, I guess it hurts that Kent, with high socioeconomic status, dumped you for someone as beautiful, thin, and well-versed as me. High socioeconomic status? <laughs> Kent? Of course. You are aware, Maria that Kent works for a prestigious company. Oh, that. It doesn't make a difference to me. You don't have to pretend. Between you and me, my life is going to be so glamorous and exciting as super wealthy Kent's wife. You must be so happy to have your so glamorous and exciting life. I wonder if it's because I'm so charming. The reason that Kent dumped you, his girlfriend of five years. You're mistaken there. You know I'm the one that ended it with Kent. Oh, that's right. My bad. You ended it with Kent when you realized I was Kent's soulmate, right? Well, Kent hooking up with you is the reason we broke up. But now I'm glad it happened and I'm no longer with Kent. Really? Are you, like, super happy now? Actually, I am, so will you quit bothering me? I'm not bothering you, but a part of me wonders if your so-called happiness is really a big fat lie. It's not like you have a boyfriend or anything. Actually, I'm going to get married, too. And unlike you, I would never lie about my happiness. Maria, you're getting married too? Congratulations! What does your fiancé do? And why didn't you tell me you have a boyfriend? There was no way I would want to tell you anything about my personal life on my own. Anyhow, we're both busy right now, so we'll wait until things settle down at work to plan our wedding. Busy? How sad that you and your fiancé have to work to the bone on the whim at your jobs. He works for a multinational trading company. He's busy studying for various certifications. Trading company? Does he have a good salary? Well, it is one of the biggest trading companies in the world. He's really busy because he has to go to many different countries for work. Switzerland, Africa, even Tahiti. Wow, that sounds promising. Just how did you meet such a catch? He's a regular at the cafe I own. We often talked when he came in, and one thing led to another, and... What? Maria, you own a cafe? I didn't know. After Kent and I broke up, I wanted something of my own that no man can take away. I've always loved going to cafes, so I decided to open up my own cafe. Really? And is business good? I'm lucky. My regulars leave me great reviews and often tell their friends, colleagues about the cafe. The cafe's been featured in a couple of magazines, and I've been interviewed for some local TV shows as well. As a result, we're really busy. What the... I mean, it must be a great cafe to be in magazines. A 
on TV! Thank you. I'm finally able to open my second cafe, so I'm extremely busy right now. I see. But if you're so busy and making so much money, you don't really need your trading company husband, do you? Why don't you introduce him to me so I can have him? Excuse me? Aren't you going to marry Kent? That was my plan, but when I checked online, employees of trading companies make way more than Kent. So, it would be better for me to marry someone who works for a trading company. Holly, do you realize how rude that statement is? My bottom line is I want to be rich and go to high society events and parties. If I can find someone higher than Kent's socioeconomic status, I'm going to go after that guy. You really are a selfish brat. And what makes you think I would introduce my own fiancé to someone like you? I can't believe you're even asking me this. Fine. It doesn't have to be your fiancé. It could be one of his colleagues. I mean, as long as their salaries are super high, anyone in his trading company will do. But he can't be an uggo. We need to look good in the pictures. <laughs> Let me make myself clear. I will not introduce a single man to you, Holly. And you contacting me like this really is a nuisance. A nuisance? I thought I was doing you a favor, letting you know I'm getting married. I thought you would be all alone and miserable after your breakup with Kent. But instead, you're so happy and successful. <sighs> How can you do this to me? To you, you have nothing to do with my success and happiness. Wait, you contacted me because you thought I would be miserable? And you wanted to rub it in? Just how much free time do you have? I'm super busy. I made time to contact you. But I never imagined this. Give me back what was supposed to be my happily ever story. I never received or believed your story. And I have nothing left to say to you, so goodbye. Wait. Don't be so mean to me. I'm sure there must be someone from your fiancé's company you can introduce me to. No, thank you. And you really should think about how you ask people for things. Anyhow, I'm busy. So goodbye. Answer your phone! Why are you bothering me so early in the morning? I have to go to work, I'm busy. Why did you go behind my back and tell Kent everything? Oh, about that. I told him. So what? You and Kent are over. What gives you the right to contact him? Don't think you can get him back. You know women who can't let go of their past loves aren't liked by other women. I had something I wanted to tell him, so I contacted him. End of story. Then why does Kent know everything? The only plausible reason is you told him. Did you know he doesn't want to marry me anymore? It's all your fault. I thought there shouldn't be any secrets between you two since you're going to get married. And if he can't accept you as you are, maybe you two weren't meant to be together. Also, how can you complain about Kent when you're the one who wanted to trade up with my fiancé? That? I was joking. I can't believe you thought I was serious. You were joking. Then why did you ask me numerous times to introduce you to someone from my fiancé's company? It didn't sound like a joke to me. Anyhow, it was a joke, okay? So contact Kent and tell him it was all a misunderstanding. What misunderstanding? I just sent Kent screenshots of our chat. He just came to the same conclusion as me. What? 
Why did you have to send him screenshots of our chat? Maybe because you were being really patronizing and rude? I have my pride, you know. And Kent was special to me once. But you totally tossed him out when you thought you had a chance at a richer guy, right? But still, you went too far. Kent has blocked my number. I can't even call him. Well, his reaction is understandable. But doesn't that work out well for you as well? Just look for another wealthy man. It isn't easy finding a wealthy man. I finally found Kent and he barely met my minimum requirements. I expect you to take responsibility and fix this situation somehow. Then maybe you should give up on getting married. I can't force Kent to marry you. He has his own feelings and opinions towards you. I can't control. Why don't you find him and trick him into marrying you again? I can't do that. I already quit work because I thought I was getting married. I have given up everything. I have no cards left to play to get him back. Well, that's none of my concern. But I think you really shouldn't base your happiness on a man. And as you know, women who can't let go of their past loves aren't liked by other women. Oh, you really are infuriating. Just because you're a successful cafe owner. My life going down the toilet is really none of your concern, right? Yep, none of my concern. It's not like I have a lot of time to waste on things that don't concern me. And I'll have you know, the cafe wasn't always successful. In the beginning, it was hard, and I was really scared. But in a way, because of you, I realized I had nothing to lose anymore. So I overcame my fears. I really hate people who say things that just sound good. It's just noise. Lots of loud, boring, useless noise. I'm not just saying things that sound good. I'm not just making noise. But there is one thing I can say to you. Happiness is not something that's easy to acquire. Uh, if you really want to be patronizing and all, the least you can do is introduce me to a great guy or two. That's enough. You are in no position to be asking me this. You know, we used to be friends. We aren't friends anymore. I only see you as an awful woman who stole my boyfriend. I thought Kent was terrible too, but... That's right. Kent's also the bad guy here, so don't be nice to him. And Maria... There must have been something wrong with you for me to be able to steal Kent from you so easily. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I should tell Kent. It's not like I have feelings for him anymore, but we were together for a long time. And he cheated on me. But the main reason I told him was you, Holly. You were so evil. You brought out my dark side. Your dark side? You are the freaking daughter of Satan. There's no way I can win. Oh, please. You're as evil as me. But you're right. You can never beat me. Okay, I admit it. I lost. Just keep kicking me now that I'm down. You know this isn't enough. Do you know how depressed I was after you hooked up with Ken? I don't think you'll ever understand how hard it was for me. About that, I am sorry. I know it's too late and there's nothing I could do now, but... As fellow Kent victims, can't we get along? Don't lump me together with you. I have a fiancé, remember? Anyhow, why don't you try some self-reflections? Analyze why you act this way. It's popular nowadays. I can't do that. I've never done anything like that before. Then just be depressed for the rest of your life. I don't want to have anything to do with you ever again. So don't contact me. 
Maria, please help me. I'm no good at being alone. Read my text carefully. Don't ever contact me again. Holly went to Kent's apartment to profusely apologize, but, of course, he didn't forgive her, so the wedding was off. Holly was the type of woman who cannot exist without a man, so she started dating random men. Most of them were married, which did not end well for her. She never thought bragging about her wedding to me would lead to such a devastating outcome. It was definitely beyond what she could possibly imagine. And because I really didn't have any feelings for Kent, her efforts to rub it in my face were really all in vain.